Hello, everybody. So I'm going to talk about connecting Ruby Motion with hardware. Uh, my name is Mark Villacampa. I'm called the same anywhere on the internet. So you, if you find a Mark Villacampa that is not me, just tell me. Uh, so just a little disclaimer. I'm Spanish, so I'm from Madrid. Uh, this is my first talk uh, ever in English. So I, I hope everybody understands me. And if I'm not making sense or I get stuck, just throw me something and I, I, I will repeat, OK? Uh, so I work for a company called Cabify in Madrid. Uh, we have a service similar to Uber, uh, where you can, uh, you can ask for a, for a car, for a high-end car and a chauffeur from your phone. Uh, we provide service in Spain, in Mexico, in Peru, and in Chile. Uh, so if you ever go over there, uh, you can try us. Uh, and we're expanding uh, quickly, so probably in more places soon. Uh, we've been using Ruby Motion since mid-2012. Uh, our main uh, iOS application has been written in Ruby Motion since then. Uh, I think we were one of the first companies to switch from, a, from a Objective-C to, uh, to Ruby Motion. Um, we've been really happy. Uh, so this was 2012, uh, starting of 2012, and I was starting a um, learning Ruby. And I started like, like everyone else almost with, with Rails. Uh, but then I found this other project called MacRuby, which back then was not was little known. Uh, so you, you could write OS 10 applications with it. And I started tinkering with it. Uh, I started going on IRC and actually bothering Watson and, <laughs> and Joshua and asking these people questions because I, I, I didn't even know Ruby back then. Uh, so, little bit after that, uh, Remotion came out, and the first time, like the, the first time, the first day it, it came out, I just bought it right away because I was I was waiting for that for a long time because I, I wanted to write applications for my iPhone, uh, and I couldn't with Mac Ruby. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I, I was going to give a talk at the Madrid Ruby, uh, the local Madrid Ruby talk, uh, Ruby group. Uh, and I was going to talk about MacRuby. Uh, and then just like after a month, less than a month after MacRuby, uh, actually Remotion came out, uh, I said, yeah, okay, maybe I can add Remotion to the talk. Uh, back then I didn't, I could barely write any Ruby. <laughs> so I thought, uh, I thought it was crazy to give a talk about that and just a month after Remotion came out. So but I thought, uh, Jack was saying this in the first uh, talk this morning, I think, I know I knew very little back then, but yes, the little I knew, I wanted to teach uh, everyone else uh, because that's what forced me to learn even more. And even if all those people knew more Ruby than me, probably I knew a, just a little bit more uh, about Mac Ruby or Remotion than then back then. So, so I think that's important that even if someone else uh, knows a lot more than you about something, you probably know a little bit more uh, than them about other things. So you can probably exchange uh, knowledge, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, I also, like one and a half years ago, I founded a company uh, with some college friends, and we, uh, we, uh, we created, assembled, and sold personal 3D printers uh, there in Spain. And so with a 3D printer, you can do many things. Uh, you can create anything that you can design uh, in a CAD program. And one of the things we did was we built this, this little robot. So uh, I actually have it here. OK. So this is a 3D printer robot. All the, all the white parts that you can see there are actually designed and 3D printed. And this is also, also open source. So all the files to print this robot actually up there on the internet that you can download it. And if you have a 3D printer at home, you can print it. And you see this little board on top. This is an Arduino board, like uh, an Arduino Uno. So it's a really common piece of, uh, of electronics, right? And I thought, mm, maybe I can you know, connect these two things together, these two things that I like, Remotion and these little robots. I would like to, uh, to use both together, right? So I, I started investigating different ways that I could do this. And being pragmatic as I 
tried to be. I said, okay, let's go for the minimum thing that you can uh, that you can find, which is like like the basic technology uh, behind something. Uh, so this is a little chart that probably analysts like this for for quadrants chart. Uh, there are probably more characteristics that you can uh, you can ask for in, in or you can look for in in, in different technologies. Uh, but I, for me, the, the important ones was uh, what's the range of, of, the, uh, of the connection, like how long can you connect to this thing. Uh, so, and also the, the, how easy it is to get set up because uh, I, I didn't know m much about software back then. I don't know now e either, but uh, so yeah, for, for long range, of course you want something that is not, uh, that doesn't use a cable. So you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, in an iPhone, there are only these two things that you can use to connect wirelessly to something. Uh, and I, I was looking at the ports on my iPhone and I did only see two, which is the jack connector for the, for the headset and uh, the lighting connector. Uh, and after doing some research, I thought that Bluetooth was way easier than uh, Wi-Fi to set up and lighting connector was easier, maybe not to set up as a developer, but for the users, for, your, for someone else to use, right? So I'm going to give a little overview of the different technologies, some of the uh, some actual projects that you can use to mm, use these other technologies, and maybe some commercial use cases for those. So the first one is this project, which is by the, by the University of Michigan. Um, this little thing connects to the jack in your in your iPhone, uh, and it actually uses uh, a low-level protocol uh, using the microphone and the uh, and the and the audio system. So uh, you can you can transmit messages. Uh, you can modulate and demodulate messages between the, this board and and your iPhone. Uh, this is actually what uh, a startup called Square uses for their card reader. So they basically have, have this uh, square uh, device. They, you plug it in your jack and, and they have this app uh, and you can just swipe uh, your credit card and it, uh, it, demo it modulates the, uh, like the, the data in the, uh, in the magnetic band uh, and the, so, so that the card can read it, right? But the problem with this approach is that mm, the hardware uh, is, is more complicated uh, is really a custom hardware that you have to build. Uh, so it's not easy to get set up. And uh, also the, the jack doesn't give you enough uh, power to really do something useful. So unless you're a, a startup like a Square with a lot of money, th those guys actually had a custom chip built so you didn't need uh, an external uh, battery for the, for the device. So this is more complicated. Another thing you can do is you can go talk to this Tim guy and ask him for, a, for an MFI license. MFI stands for, I think it stands for uh, made for iPhone and ma made for iOS. And this is a program that Apple has uh, for third, part, third party companies to create accessories, official accessories for the iPhone. Uh, but the problem with this is like that there are a couple of disadvantages for, uh, for companies. Uh, there is the information, like most things with Apple, the information is not public, so uh, you have to actually go talk to Apple. So like any other service where you, ca where you have to go ask for the price, uh, it's probably expensive. Uh, and also there is this, this program where you, you have to share some revenue with Apple and they have this very strict quality control, uh, licensing things and, and all that. And also the, for some, if you, depending on what you want to do, you have to include uh, a proprietary chip uh, from Apple to do the authentication with the iPhone. So yeah, that's, that's a bit complicated. Uh, but in case you are a bit crazy and want to go this way, or you have a lot of money and you want to create a, a, a device and sell to millions of people, uh, actual, the actual framework um, that you have to use to talk to these devices, it's public. It's called external accessory kit, and it just has uh, three classes. Uh, I haven't really read the documentation about this because uh, I haven't used it but uh, probably it's not very difficult. Uh, there is also this company called Red Park, 
uh, they build this lighting serial cable. Uh, this is actual, uh, this is an actual MFI device. So uh, these guys actually have a, a contract with Apple. They uh, they made this official uh, cable. And what what you can do with this is they have this SDK that you can include in your application, uh, and you can connect this uh, this cable. You, uh, and this is actually a serial cable. Uh, so this cable probably has a lot of uh, use cases in industrial setups, uh, like um, with, in, you know, in factories, they don't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because that's more uh, unreliable. So if you want to actually connect to a mainframe or whatever you have, uh, and you want your employees to, for example, do it from a tablet, from, from an iPad, from a tablet or whatever, it's, uh, this is what you, what you could use. But the problem with this is uh, the MFI devices, so the MFI uh, devices are, attached to, uh, to only one application. So you cannot go uh, buy this cable, build uh, an app for it, and just upload it to the App Store and tell your users to buy this cable. Uh, you actually, uh, every, uh, like every device is attached to a bundle identifier or something like that, right? So you have to license the technology from, uh, from this company and actually build your own cable, even though it's the same hardware. So yeah, if, if you're into that, that might be a, another, another solution. So that was uh, physical hardware, physical connections. Uh, now we're switching to wireless. Uh, so this is, uh, now we're switching to uh, Wi-Fi actually. So Bonjour is this technology which uh, many of you have probably heard about. Uh, it has many names. Uh, whenever I, I have to Google something about it, I go crazy because everybody calls it different names. Uh, so this is actually um, a networking protocol for uh, automatic discovery of, uh, of Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet devices connected to your, your same local network. Uh, this is, for example, what AirPlay uh, uses uh, under the hood. Um, and it's, it's useful if, if, you, if you want to mm, set up, easily connect to a device on your same local network. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's actually probably what uh, what OS then uses uh, to connect to other uh, computers on the same network, or or to connect to an Apple TV or whatever. And there's just uh, these two classes that you have to to learn about uh, to to actually advertise a service from your computer or from your device, or to actually browse the local network to find other devices. Is it uh, NSNet service and NSNet service browser? Uh, yeah, Apple has uh, a few uh, examples with this, so you can. So in case you want to actually use Bonjour with your hardware, uh, I, for example, bought this this small device, which is called the Spark Core. Uh, these guys actually did a Kickstarter uh, a few times ago. Um, so what, what this is, this actually uses, uh, all, all the hardware actually just comes down to chips, it's just silicon. So most of, the, uh, most of the advantages in these areas come from uh, a big uh, chip company releasing a new cheaper chip okay, that, that you can uh, put in your hardware. So for example, there is the, uh, uh, well, the name is wrong, it's, not, it's Texas, uh, Texas Instruments, but the, the actual chip is uh, CC3300. Uh, uh, this is a device, a really cheap device uh, that enables your hardware to uh, to connect, to have Wi-Fi. Uh, so this is just a little board that these uh, guys from Spark made. Um, and yeah, you can, it actually has a small uh, ARM uh, processor inside that you can program and, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And uh, so it actually has this, uh, this output, this, this pinout that you can connect to other hardware. So yeah, this could be a, they have a really nice um, documentation, they have this, uh, this online uh, IDE that you can even uh, program this device from the internet. So I like these kinds of companies that actually take this this more complex technology, like the like this Texas Instruments device, and and they build an actual board with good documentation so that normal people like us can can use it. I think this is good. Then there is finally there is Bluetooth. Uh, mm, I'm, more specifically, the, la the latest version of Bluetooth, which is Bluetooth Low Energy, or Bluetooth 4.0, which is basically the same thing. Uh, and Bluetooth has this 
really, really nice uh, framework or core Bluetooth. Uh, but like, like any uh, Cocoa API, it's a bit complex to get all the concepts. So I'm going to do a, a no bullshit explanation or explanation of the core data classes. So there are only a few, like CB Central Manager is just the class you use to discover and connect to Bluetooth devices nearby. Near, nearby. CB Peripheral is actually the, the class that, uh, that represents a device that you are connected to or that you just discovered. CB Peripheral Manager is the, the class that, uh, that helps you turn your iPhone into, a, into an actual Bluetooth Elite device. So you can actually create, a, turn your iPhone into, into a Bluetooth Elite device so, so other devices can connect to it or even other iPhones. Uh, CB Central uh, is the other, the other device that connects to yours when you have actually turned your iPhone into a, into a Bluetooth Elite device. And so, if you're if you've ever used any any Bluetooth uh, any Bluetooth uh, device in the past, uh, for example, Bluetooth 2.1, which is the most uh, was the most used version of Bluetooth before Bluetooth Elite came out, you actually have to go if you use it from the iPhone, you actually have to go to the settings, and you have to go to this menu, and you find all the devices and you pair with those devices in there. But Bluetooth 4.0 is is it's completely different. It, it's not the same concept. So you don't have to actually pair with that. You pair from your app, right? And every uh, Bluetooth LED device doesn't have just one purpose or one profile, as they call it in, uh, in Bluetooth 2.1. Uh, you actually can advertise different services. So a service is just an abstract thing that, an, an abstract feature that your device has. Uh, and each service can have even some sub-services, and it, has, it, can, it, have, it can have also some characteristics. Uh, and a characteristic is something that you can, it's a value that you can read from a device, or that you can also set. So for example, if you have, I don't know, a, a heart rate uh, monitor, which is like the, the, the always the, the example for Bluetooth LED devices, you can actually read the value of the, of the heart rate or you can set some setting to, I don't know, change the color of a LED or whatever. And also there's these things that you have probably heard about because they are very popular lately, which are the iBeacons. And again, I'm going to uh, demystify iBeacons. iBeacons are just Bluetooth LED devices uh, for which Apple has made this cool DSL where you actually know the location of the stuff, of, of the of the eye beacons in the in the room, but actually they're they're doing nothing more than reading the strength of the of the um, the strength of the signal that you're getting from that device. So you know uh, you know how close to the device they are. So you could actually even implement your own eye beacon DSL on top of core Bluetooth. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, you might know this one technology that I haven't talked about. Uh, I'm not the only one. Apple has been ignoring this technology too, which is NFC, near field communication, or whatever it's called. Uh, so this is this thing that people say is going to be the next thing for payments because you just you can just put your phone on top of the uh, of the register and, and and you can pay with that. But actually, iBeacons can actually can actually be used like if it was an NFC device because uh, actually Apple is using, it's already using this. I don't know if someone here has an, an Apple TV, but to set up an, an Apple TV, you actually get your iPhone and you put your iPhone really close to the Apple TV and it, uh, and it, it gets your, your Wi-Fi uh, your your wi information from the iPhone and also a couple, a couple of uh, more pieces of information. Uh, so actually, Mm, iBeacons can be used as if it was NFC. So if any analyst is in the room and is going to write uh, an article that Apple is going to add NFC to the iPhone, I don't think so. Okay, so there's another cool thing that you can do with Bluetooth Low Energy uh, that very few people know about and it's been around for like more than a year. 
It's called the Apple Notification Center Service. And this thing allows you to, uh, to read all the notifications from the notification center on an iPhone from a Bluetooth LE device. So if any of you have heard about the Pebble smartwatch, uh, this, is, this is just, uh, I think, probably the most uh, famous smartwatch uh, out there. Uh, they did this Kickstarter. I think it was the, the biggest Kickstarter uh, ever. Uh, and what they do is they pair with your iPhone, and you can see all the notifications uh, in the actual device. And this is a service that Apple provides. Uh, and what they do is actually they turn your iPhone into a, into a Bluetooth LE device and advertises the, they advertise this service, which is actually the Apple Notification Center service. And you, you can actually read values from this Bluetooth LE device that is your phone. And these values are just the, the information in your, uh, in your uh, notification center. So you can see how you can build these really cool things on top of uh, Bluetooth LE and this uh, service and characteristics and all these things. It, it allows you to create these really good abstractions on top, on top of this technology to build cool things. And yeah, I, I think you probably, uh, you probably by now you, you know that I, the technology that I like the most is Bluetooth because it's the one I've been talking most. Uh, and I don't know if you know the ne next week there is this this conference that this fruit company is, is having, and I think they're going to mm, to announce some cool things regarding this uh, all this whole Bluetooth thing. I don't know if it's going to be uh, a revamp of the notification center or something else, but I would keep an eye on it if you if you like this thing. So actually, I haven't talked about any. Uh, third-party devices that you can use for Bluetooth LE. You can, you can probably buy some ID cons uh, somewhere. I think there's this, uh, co this company called Eskimote uh, in New York that does some, but I actually want to go to something more um, with which I can do more things. It's more versatile and I can program it the way I want. And I found this, this small device called the HM10. Uh, this actually uses the another Texas instrument uh, processor. It's called the CC2541, whatever. Uh, is uh, is the same family of um, of chips that the Pebble, for example, the, the smartwatch that I was talking about uses. Um, so it, this 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 board is actually a, a Bluetooth LE to serial converter. So uh, the well, Serial, uh, this protocol has a couple of names, as UART, RS-232. Uh, it's basically a serial connection, uh, and this is the easiest way that you can connect to any hardware. For example, Ardui to an Arduino, you connect uh, using a serial, uh, a USB to serial uh, converter. So it's probably the easiest way, and almost any hardware, any hobby hardware that you're going to use, you're going to be able, you're going to be able to talk to it uh, through serial. So I bought this board. I actually uh, bought this board. It's actually it, ha it has to be soldered to another breakout board where you can actually uh, have these pins where you can connect the stuff. Um, so it, I actually have one here. So it's this little thing. It has these pins over here that you can connect to. Uh, Yeah, so this is actually made by a, by a Chinese company that I cannot pronounce, so I, I, I am not going to. Uh, but you can actually buy it really cheap. I think it was like $10 uh, for the thing. And you can actually, uh, using a, another serial, USB to serial uh, converter, which I encourage you to buy one because it's really useful for any uh, hardware um, job that you want to do, uh, it's going to be useful. So you can send these commands through serial so serial protocol is just a way to, uh, to send and receive strings from other devices. So you can send all these commands so you can uh, actually configure this thing to advertise different services, uh, different characteristics. You can even make it work as an iBeacon. Uh, but the main, the main service that this actually advertises is a serial, uh, a serial service with a serial characteristic. 
So you can actually connect to anything. Uh, I'm right here. It's connected to an Arduino board, but you actually can connect to anything that has a, a serial port. And if you are going to connect it to um, uh, to an Arduino board, if you have an Arduino Due, which is uh, one of the latest versions that has an uh, an ARM uh, ARM device and an ARM uh, processor, you can actually run Ruby on it. So you could you could run Ruby on your iPhone and connect to an Arduino Ruby and run in Ruby. Uh, because there is this MRuby project. I don't know if if many of you have heard about it. Uh, MRuby is just uh, a small implementation of Ruby uh, that runs on on it's 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 target to run on embedded software and um, on embedded hardware. It was started by uh, by Matt, by the creator of Ruby. I think uh, it is. I don't know if it is already in in version 1.0, but but I think it's it's getting there. It's been around for a while. One thing that amazes me is that I think it is. It is actually funded by the Japanese uh, Japanese government, which is crazy for me because the Japanese go uh, the, the Spanish government would never do something like that. But yeah, it's crazy. So you, you can check. It. That is actually not the um, the mruby uh, repository. The mruby repository is probably mruby slash mruby. But uh, that one you can easily. That's like a gem for mruby that you can easily use to connect to an Arduino. So so you can you can check that out. Uh, and some places you can go buy stuff because I think for for a software person that wants to get into hardware, the most difficult thing is actually finding the actual hardware that is going to be useful for you. Like you get into eBay and you get all these different devices that you don't know about. The documentation there is no documentation. Mm, I don't know. It, it's really difficult to find those. So I've given a few uh, a few examples. Uh, for some uh, for some devices that you can buy that are going to work and uh, yeah there are a couple of companies here in the USA that uh, this uh, Adafruit and Sparkfun this guy actually this guys do the uh, like they are mostly open source they have mostly open source hardware and they actually build their board uh, so and they have really nice documentation so that's that's the the gold thing right because otherwise you have to Google the documentation, find find it somewhere else, and it's more difficult. Uh, and also, there is this uh, this other company in China called Seed Studio. Uh, they have all this uh, open hardware also that you can buy, and they ship worldwide. So these are mostly the the websites that I uh, that I buy from. And then, of course, eBay and all these other places, you're going to find a lot of things. And I also like Kickstarter a lot because. I think uh, the Kickstarter uh, companies is is one of the responsible for all this uh, for all this hype that's going around hardware lately because it's so easy to uh, just design something, uh, put together a prototype, put it on Kickstarter, get some money, and actually build it because otherwise uh, it's really difficult to get all the money necessary to mm, to manufacture all these devices in a quantity that is that that you are going to get a reasonable price for, so I think like every week uh, a couple of, of of Arduino related or hardware or projects are going to be around. I think Mark has something uh, on hands also, so uh, I, I encourage you to check Kickstarter, see what projects are going on right now, and maybe uh, back some of them because they're usually really cool and also open source. And I would like to to like announce a, a project that I've been thinking about for a while, which is motion Bluetooth. So what I want to do is create a DSL on top of core Bluetooth that has a more Ruby way of doing things, and uh, which helps you get easily connected to any Bluetooth LE device. Uh, so it has this. I'm going to show you, to show you some code. Uh, it has this. Uh, Similar to Active Record device, where you can actually um, you can actually describe the uh, the uh, the devices that you want to connect to, and you can just find go find them and get this callback. So it's callback based instead of delegate based. In case 
because uh, I really like the uh, eventable module in, in bubble wrap. I don't know if anyone uses it. I use it all the time. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very, uh, like I just hacked together something for the demo. Uh, the, the actual code is really ugly, but I think I'm going to get working on it. Um, I would also like to announce support for Android uh, and also BlackBerry and MS-DOS phones. Uh, I'm going to get working on it whenever I, I buy an Android device because I don't have one. Uh, yeah, so let's do something. Oh, this guy's not moving. He should move, but anyway. So you, you guess that after all the research that I did, I finally managed to make this guy move from my phone, right? I, I hope so. Let, let's see now, right? So, yeah, I think I'm... Ooh, I just, I, yeah, just one more. Yeah, so I think Johnny Ive will, would be proud of me. You can see I, I'm not a designer. Uh, so this is what I hacked together. Um, I think it's self-explanatory, right? Mm, you have this label on top, which tells you if you have connected to, um, to, the, to the actual robot, and you have these buttons without borders uh, that you can tap to do things with the robot, right? So yeah, and it's accessible also because Austin was playing with it before, so uh, yeah. So let me show you some code. Yeah, so the API is just something I, I, I've hacked together, so nothing is, is final. I'm, I'm just actually still thinking about possible use cases because I haven't used uh, Bluetooth enough to know what are all the use cases, so probably the API is going to change, but it should probably look something like this, right? So you have this, this base class that you inherit from. If you want to declare a, a new Bluetooth uh, LE device, so, you know, in Bluetooth 2.1, uh, when you go to the settings uh, menu and all that, you have all these names for Bluetooth devices. In Bluetooth LE, you have that too, but like every device has a name. In this case, I'm, I'm going to uh, like to tell my app that there's, a device, there's going to be a device called Puppy that, uh, that you want to connect to. And you're going to describe a series of services and characteristics uh, that the device is going to have. So then you can find devices with, with different methods. Like you can tell, okay, go find any device that I have declared. Uh, and if it finds a device that you have declared, it is going to connect, do all these things. Or maybe you can tell it to just connect to, go find and connect to a device of this particular class or that has this particular service uh, advertised or whatever. Okay, so I have the app here. And it says connected because, uh, well, I couldn't show you the, the call, but yeah, what, it, what it's actually doing is, uh, so I just define that class in there, and then I, I uh, actually define some uh, callbacks on the actual robot class using uh, an API similar to the, to the eventable module in bubble wrap, which is like, just like passing some callbacks to it. So they have a callback for when the actual device connected, uh, connects and that, uh, that callback sets the, um, the label here. Wait, one second. It actually sets the label on top. Uh, and then I have some callbacks for when it disconnects, uh, when it discovers the services on the device, and when it discovers the characteristics inside those services. So actually, inside the characteristics, what I'm doing is uh, just, mm, when I find the characteristics, that is, uh, which is just a UID uh, that describes the characteristic that is the serial module, I'm just saving it, I'm detecting it, 
uh, and then I'm in enable, and, and I'm enabling the uh, the button. And what each button does is just it's writing a value inside. Uh, it's, it's writing a value to that characteristic. So this is like a like a self-made, really small protocol that I made. The actual code uh, in the Ardu in the Arduino on the robot is just a really small switch where I tell it, if you get this from the serial, you're going to do this. If you get this other string, you're going to do this. So I have this uh, this small protocol where if I send an S, the actual robot is going to stop. If I send a U, it's going to go forward. Uh, you get the idea, right? So. Going forward now, I think I'm going to turn right and then go forward again. Woo! Yeah. This floor is not really good for for the robot. I think it doesn't like this this floor anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. <laughs>